Yes, sir, if you want real entertainment, the best place to find it is in front of a General Electric Black Daylight Big As Life television set. See it in operation at your General Electric dealers tomorrow. And when you see it, well, you'll know that you're seeing the best. This ain't your father's General Electric. It's innovating in aviation, healthcare, energy, and beyond. The iconic industrial is going digital and shopping startups. Can the giant adapt at the speed of the future? All right, what are we supposed to make of the stock of General Electric here? In 2015, GE stock roared higher as the company got rid of its murky financial divisions and focused on being a leaner, meaner industrial manufacturer with a distinct software and digital edge that's only grown. But since then, for more than a year, the stock has basically been trading water, trading between the high 20s, low 30s. Now, for a while, GE seemed like it was getting a second wind after Trump's surprise victory suddenly made the industrials a lot more attractive. However, this stock seemed to lose a lot of its peel after GE reported on January 20th. Their gigantic industrial posted inline earnings, slightly weaker than expected revenue, and the company itself talked about pluses and minuses right on the top of the call. And while the industrial stocks have continued to rally this year, GE stock is down 6.87%. So is the recent weakness a buying opportunity, or do the skeptics and pessimists have a point? I think there's a lot of confusion surrounding the company. I want to clear the air. That's why I'm thrilled that we've got a chance to speak with Jeff Immel, the longtime chairman, CEO of General Electric, to find out how his company's really doing. Mr. Immel, Immel, welcome back to Mad Money. It is great to see you, sir. Jeff, Thank thanks. you. Good to see you. And you've never dodged. Good to be back. You've never dodged. No, so here we go. All Coming right. With you. It's great to be with you. All right. Thank great. you. All right. Thanks, first, Jim. this is a strange time. What's the role of a global CEO like yourself when the president loudly proclaims America first? Look, I, I think we have to keep running our our company. Mm -hmm. There's never going to be exactly everything that the president says that we agree or disagree with. I've, I've, this is my third administration. Right. So there's a lot that I like in what President Trump's doing, right? Uh, uh, infrastructure, tax reform, regulatory reform. I think outside the U.S., you know, Jim, we're on our own, I think, a little okay. bit outside the United States. Gee, it's a highly global company. We don't really need trade deals to be effective. You know, we can kind of navigate the world on our own, and, and I'm per perfectly comfortable doing that. I think it's up to me, from an investor okay. standpoint, to be able to be a good American company, but still be able to do business in Saudi Arabia, China, Brazil, and we plan to keep doing that. But it's up to you. But on the other hand, there's some people who are on the phone of the pre with the president. They're not happy with America. Some of these are great clients of yours. What do you tell them when you're trying to go to them look, look out the window. They got 5,000 G people in their country. Okay. We're installing, you know, a, a new power plant. We're working with their hospitals. We don't, we don't have to, like, go through Washington on our way to be global. Okay. We are global. We, we've got people all over, all over the world. And again, I, I, I really want the president to reach out and have great negotiations mm -hmm. and relationships around the world, but we, it's our job to do that on our own. Okay. Now, I, I totally understand And we'll continue that. to grow our global business. I understand business. that, and I know you believe that GE, it, it, which is an important player in China, needs China and the United States to be together. But at the same time, what if, if the president says, you know, we've been in a trade war for China with China a long time, and we've just been laying down, and they've been giving us the business. And you know what? We're going to slap a 25 percent tariff. We're, 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 we're a net exporter. In other words, we're running the president's play. We're, we're a $20 billion U.S. exporter. We, we export may, way more than we import. And I think at the end of the day, look, we've got 5 percent of the world's uh, population okay. and 25 percent of the world's GDP. We, we create great jobs here when we sell our products every place. And I think the president knows that. But maybe the president just says, you know what, GE's earnings aren't as important as manufacturers in America. So what we're going to do is declare I'd Taiwan say we to China. Here, Mr. President, I, because he says, tomorrow, we're he says, an exporter to China. You're winning, Mr. President. Help Does us he win hear more. you? Does he hear you? Well, look, we're just we're in the second week. Okay. I think this is a smart guy. He's going to figure all this stuff out. And you're really helping? Are you an advocate? Are you helping him? Are you advising we him? Or are you just listening? Him. We're going to help him in any way we can. And we're going to lead by example because we're going to continue to be a great exporter. We're going to continue to win around the world. But what happens if you get a call like uh, Greg Hastert from United Technologies, where it's just like every, 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 every CEO is going to have to come up? But, but I think we're running his play. Okay. I think we're, we're running the export play. I think these things like wage arbitrage, that's 1980s. Okay. That's, what, that's what GE did in the 1980s. Now, when we globalize, it's to sell more. All and right. I would say to the president, look, level the playing field. We can take on any company in the world. All Help right. us do that. All right, but let's talk about that. Yeah. Uh, because the last conference call, 
uh, you might want to take on everyone in the world, but you said yourself, you underperformed. You talked right at the top, pluses mm -hmm. and minuses. You know that you yourself weren't happy with everything. What are you doing to fix the divisions that are not delivering to, the, so, to your So, specs? Jim, what I would say, if you, if you look at last year in its totality, Really, the biggest drain on the company was oil and gas by far, right? right? Oil and gas down 35 percent, the rest of the company up 8 uh, percent. What do we do in oil and gas? We've done, I think, the smartest, truest deal that positions us for the upturn. The, the team has done everything we've asked them to Baker do. Hughes merger. Baker okay. Hughes merger. And then I think if you look at power, which is the other business, okay. look, they grew organically 3 or 4 percent in the quarter. They're positioned to do 5 percent or plus this year. I think the power business is going to have a great 2017. I All like right. the way we're positioned. All right. Now, Credit Suisse doesn't. An analyst, uh, Credit Suisse says this was a fairly dispiriting one for quarter for GE shareholders with little evidence of improved operational execution, a revenue miss which sat oddly against a bullish management tone at the top line outlook at the December. Uh, Look, we, we were a 1% organic growth in uh, 2016. We're teed up to be 3 to 5% organic growth in 2017. We've got a very strong backlog. We've got Alstom that's operating at, at, uh, okay. at full. Every, every cylinder is operating there. I like the way the company is. Okay, so J.P. Morgan, Stephen Tusa, who you know has a sell on your mm -hmm. stock, he's saying that the industrial segment's profits ended $1.5 billion lower than initial guidance. This was a miss to an already dramatically lowered Bard. Jeff, I mean, you know, this is you. Know, you. Jim, Come look, on, you, you look, bang out the numbers. Jim, last year, overall segment earnings with both verticals and industrial, roughly flat with 2015. We're forecasting 3 to 5 percent organic growth, 100 basis points improvement, good backlog, good momentum. I think a strong 2017. I like the way we're positioned. In 2017. Then, then why does you're, it you're do going through the bears? Okay, right? well, you're, Deutsche you're Bank. I mean, there's a lot of firms yeah. now. I'm dealing with Credit yeah. Trio. I got JP Morgan at Deutsche Bank. Yeah. Uh, uh, Credit uh, Deutsche Bank says uh, are, we should be concerned that maybe, perhaps, that uh, you can't do bigger dividend increases, which you know I love. We talk about it on the show all the time. We gave and, 30 billion dollars back to investors well, last year. They're saying 30, that the free 30, cash 30, flow of 30 billion dollars back last year. Okay. okay. So you're, uh, you're uh, disagreeing another, point blank. Uh, uh, forecast to be $20 billion plus this year. So what do you and say to an analyst who says the cash situation could become serious? Is that uh, an analyst just wrong? Is he wrong, Jeff? Just wrong. He's just yeah. wrong. Jim, $30 billion in buyback and dividends in 2016. Okay. Another $20 billion in buyback and dividends in 2017. That's pretty strong. Then That's pretty strong. Then why aren't people paying more for the stock? It, it, why don't are people still saying you got to take out more costs? Buck 31, why? buck 49. Consensus, the $2, can the two dollars happen? Can, can consensus Jeff? next year, you know, is probably between a buck sixty and a buck sixty-five. Right. You know, we've laid out a plan to do aggressive cost takeout. We've got strong organic growth between the buyback and acquisitions. Good boost to earnings okay. per share. Our EPS last year uh, was above the XLI, right? Okay. Our organic growth was above the XLI. So, again, but, you know, if we look, I at like the, the way the company. If we look at the, the you know, if we look at the total shareholder return, Jeff, from yep. when you started, okay, so uh, with dividends reinvested, to be fair, you're 20.4 percent. Uh, the group average, I did a group average of 10, is uh, about 440 percent, and the S and P is 173 percent. Yep. So what do we say? Look, Jim, the whole company is different than it was 15 years ago. Okay. We we're 50 percent financial service earnings, right? The whole company has been repositioned. So if you look over the last five years, we've outperformed the S&P 500 and the XLI. If you look over the last two years, dramatically uh, uh, outperformed the XLI and the S&P 500. I like the way 17 is positioned. Look, well, I, I'm, I I'm, I'm, I, you know, again, okay, we, look, we I can see the tenure up 18 yeah. percent versus uh, my group, and it's, it's Honeywell, Emerson, Boeing, Eaton, Danaher, Ingersoll, Rand, United Technologies, which, 3 MPH. Which, 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 which guys rode through the financial crisis? In 2007, okay. in 2008. All right, well, but what do, you, what do you do with shareholders who are, um, let's just say, unhappy? Share, share, shareholders own the company, okay. right? Again, I go back to the last five years, outperformed the S&P 500, strong two-year performance, okay. well-positioned in the transitions that we've done with G Capital going, uh, investments in Alstom and aqu in industrial acquisitions. I think Baker Hughes is a smart mm -hmm. deal. Oil and gas clearly has uh, created headwinds, but okay. I like the way we're performing. We'll, the way we'll we're do the shareholder the base. Are you hearing from shareholders who are saying, you know what, Jeff, this is supposed to be a breakout year and you didn't make the numbers, and all the industrials are screaming, and ours is down 6%. Look, Jim, in 2015, we were up almost 30%. The XLI was flat. Okay. Last year, we were up 
uh, uh, 4%, the XLIs did better. Okay, my expectation by the time it's all written in 2017, we're going to have a really strong year, a do really you, good year. Do you need to make change? Uh, uh, locomotives down 58 percent. You want to stay in that business? What, Look, we, where, we, we, what we, we earn other? more in this cycle, okay. right? This is a business that goes through cycles. Right. We've earned more in this cycle than we did in peak years five or six years ago. So this is a business that's performing very well. And we think continues to be a strong part of the so, G portfolio. So the, 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 you're very confident now. The projection, projections, which are very strong for 2017, not an issue. Even though some of these analysts are saying that the, the quarter's already started off weak. I don't know how they know that. I, I don't see it that way. I, I, I think this. I really 2017, when you think about it, okay, has got earnings per share up double digits. Right. It's got organic growth at the high end of the peer set. Mm -hmm. It's got margin expansion, right? Right. Uh, These are all the things 20, I'm looking for. You know I'm all in on this one, Jeff. $20 billion of, uh, between dividends and, and share repurchase, $20 billion back, dollars back to investors. Of the, of, the, of the tripod, deregulation, repatriation, tax reform, which ones work best for you? Oh, look, I think if we could get tax reform in this country, you know, really, not just for GE, but for everybody. Even though your I tax rate was minus two, this it's not, it wouldn't help you this No, quarter. but look, we paid $7 billion of cash taxes last year, Jim. Uh, again, there's such a difference in terms of book versus cash taxes. We paid, we paid a big tax bill in 2016. And deregulation, to play up your way? Deregulation is always good. Okay. But when I look at the greater good, you know, we are in an investment a down cycle in this country for the past almost right. 20 years. Tax reform has got to help that. So. Well, as always, he answered every question. I <laughs> Look, I got to ask these things. We've known each other for years. I want the stock higher. You want the stock higher. You're look, all look, in. Jim, you have millions of dollars at, of stock. At, at, the, at the end of the day, right, name a company that's done more over the past 10 or 15 or 20 years to change To change? No, than you, GE had to, has. you had to change You're not, you're, you're not going to name You had to change it. Right. Yeah. That's Jeff Immel. Thank you so much. He's the CEO and chairman of GE. You'll be able to see part two of the interview next week when we're out in San Francisco as part of our Invest in America Defining the Future series when we focus on tech. Thank you so Great, much, Jim. Jeff. Good Thanks. to talk to you. Good to be with you. And money's back in for the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.